All right, so for a differential equation, you're given this equation in terms of a derivative. So dy dx is the derivative, and our goal is to find what the original equation is. So essentially, it's just an antiderivative. You're given the derivative, you want the original equation, you have to go backwards. Um, so hey guys, if we did the derivative of this, 4x plus 3, what would, or excuse me, if we did the antiderivative of this, 4x plus 3, what would we get? I need a function that if I did the derivative, this would be my answer. We're just trying to go back. So what would we get? I know that might take you guys a second to type in the chat because it's going to involve an exponent. You have to use the little capital six there, but um, go ahead and, and give me, I'm going to wait until I get some answers from you guys. I want the antiderivative for that. Yeah, good. Nice job, guys. I knew that would take a minute for you guys to type, so I was, I was giving some wait time there. Good. So 2x squared plus 3x. And what we want is for the point 0 to, 5, 0, 5 to be on that graph. So you know how we usually put like a plus c at the end? Um, in this case, we're going to have a plus 5 because we want it to follow this, which is called an initial condition. We've talked about initial conditions before. Remember in unit 8 when we did um, you know, like a hot air balloon is flying through the air and it started at the ground, like where it started. Oh, do you remember the gopher and the monkey problem? One started in the tree, one started under the ground. That's called the initial condition. So if you're given an initial condition, you're going to use it. If you're not given one, you would just leave a plus C in there. Now, obviously, I started with like a super easy example. They're going to become more complicated than that. But it's very just heavy on the algebra. So if your algebra skills are good, then you're going to be just fine with this. And again, this usually goes over pretty well. That's why I like to end with it. So here are the steps. If you're a steps person, like give me some steps. Do this, do this, do this. Here's your answer. I've got you. Here are your steps. Step one, you're going to separate the variables. Everything with a Y is going to go to the left. Everything with an X is going to go to the right. Here, I should even write that. Y is going to go to the left. X is going to go to the right. Now, we're only going to do differential equations that are called separable. All the ones we do, you will be able to separate. You want to go down to college and take a course called differential equations where like the whole course is on this stuff. You'll even do ones that are considered non-separable. We're not going to do this here. I'm just letting you know there's like this whole world of differential equations. It's like a whole course. We're just going to kind of scratch the surface. So separate the variables. And then you're going to integrate. That's the antiderivative. So you're going to integrate both sides, doing exactly what I asked you guys to do in the chat there. And then I make this a step all by itself because it's so important. Make sure you put a plus C. This should really be the same step. When you integrate, you should put a plus C. But I call it its own step just because it's so important. You need to make sure that you put that. All right. And then you're going to use the initial condition. If there is one. Sometimes they don't give one. And if there's not, then you would just skip this step. And then lastly, solve for y. So just get y by itself. So your answer should be y equals something. Now listen carefully, because I want you to understand this. If there is an initial condition, because we're going to build on this on the next lesson in this unit when we come back from spring break. If there is an initial condition, you are finding one answer. It is one specific answer for that initial condition. If you're not given an initial condition and you just leave plus C in there, you have found the general solution, which is an infinite number of answers because C could be anything. So if you use an initial condition, there's one answer, one specific answer. If there's no initial condition and you just leave plus C, that's the general solution. That's an infinite number of answers because again, C could be anything. I'm hammering that hard because I want to make sure you understand what it is you're actually finding. Now, beyond that, we're just going to do a bunch of problems. This is just a drill and practice kind of thing. So again, if that's your thing, like here, let me just do some math problems. This is it, right? So we've got dy dx equals our differential equation. I want to multiply over the 3y squared. So I'm going to multiply that to this side. And I'm going to multiply the dx to this side. When it's simple like this, you can kind of just think of it as cross multiplication. Uh, but I want everything with a y to go to the left. I'm multiplying over the 3y squared. And then I want everything with an x to go to the right. So I'm multiplying over the dx. This is going to be 3y squared dy equals 1 dx. That is step one, separate the variables. 
So all the Ys are over here, all the Xs are over here. All right, then you are going to integrate. I like to put this in here with a different color so that you can see that it's its own set. So now we're gonna do the antiderivative for both sides. So this side would be Y cubed. And then this side, antiderivative of just one would be X plus C. You're like, hey, why don't we put a plus C over here? So you have a constant on the left side and a constant on the right side. You would subtract it over and combine them. It would just be one whole constant. You can just put plus C at the end of the whole. So it's fine to just put it over here. All right, so we did the antiderivative. We put a plus C. There's no initial condition given, so I'm going to skip that. Last step is to solve for y. So to get rid of the cube, we're going to cube root. And then this is your final answer. Now we got an infinite number of answers because C could be any number that you wanna plug in. Now let's talk about the roots for a second. If you have an even root, like a square root or a fourth root or a sixth root, that's where you put the plus and minus. If it's an odd root, you don't have to worry about that. All right. And if you want a more in-depth conversation as to why that happens, come by office hours and I'll be more than happy to explain that. That's kind of like another conversation unto itself. But if it's an even root, you need to put a plus minus. If it's an odd root, you do not. All right, let's try another one. Um, I'm gonna multiply the four y over and then I'm gonna multiply the dx over to the right-hand side. Again, you can kind of think of this as just cross multiplication. We'll get four y dy equals three x to the fifth plus one dx. And then we're going to integrate both sides. So antiderivative. So the left side, that would be two y squared. The right side, now without that three there, this would be one six x to the sixth. But with this three there, that would make it three six x to the sixth and three six would reduce to one half. So one half x to the sixth plus, now just one would be x for the antiderivative and then plus c. So we separated the variables, we integrated, we put a plus c. Now this one does have an initial condition and oftentimes x is gonna be zero, but it isn't always. I have an example later on here where it's not zero. Remember the accumulation doesn't always start at zero. It can start somewhere else. Um, oftentimes it is though. All right, so we're gonna plug in zero for X. So all these X's are just gonna be zero. So this side would actually just be C. And we're gonna plug in negative two for Y. All right, so negative two squared would be four times two is eight. So this gives us that C is eight. And then what you want to do is go back to the step right after the integration and what you're gonna do is just recopy this exactly like it looks, except instead of plus C, you're gonna put plus eight. You go back to the step right after you did the antiderivative and just recopy it, but instead of plus C, you're gonna put whatever it was you found for C. We found that C is eight. This portion was basically like a little side problem that we did to figure out what C is. In fact, if you wanted to even do these steps off to the side, you could. Uh, but you have to find C and then put the eight in for C and then get Y by itself. So we're gonna divide everything by two to get rid of this two here. So if you divide by two, that'll be one fourth X to the six plus one half X plus four. I just went through and divided it all by two. And then to get rid of the squared, we're gonna square root. Okay, now I just said, when you do the even roots, you're gonna put plus minus. That is just if it's the general solution. If you have a C in there, you would need plus minus because you're finding an infinite number of solutions. If you have an initial condition, you need to choose whether you want the positive or the negative. Because again, remember, if there's an initial condition, you're only finding one specific answer. And whether it's positive or negative just comes from what your initial condition was. This one is negative, so I want the negative square root. So again, even roots are plus and minus, but if you have an initial condition, you just want one specific answer. So you have to choose, do I want the plus or do I want the minus? This one was negative and it's based on the Y value for that. And I have seen them come up on you know, AP questions where if it's multiple choice, this would be an answer choice. 
And then without the negative would be an answer choice. So they do that. It's real tricky. So you have to be on your toes and be paying attention to whether your initial condition is positive or negative. All right, let's try one that's not just basic cross multiplication. Um, here we want to move all the y's to the left. So I'm going to divide over this y to the fourth. So that's being divided over. Do one over y to the fourth dy. And then everything that's left over here is 4x. And I'm going to multiply over the dx. So I divided the y to the fourth to the other side. And then I multiplied the dx to the right side. I'm just going to take my eraser and fix this so I don't run out of room here. One over y to the fourth. Actually, I'll ask you guys this question. I'll throw this one at you guys. I can write that as y to what power? Because I don't want this to be one over y to the fourth. I can write that as y to the what? And good. Nice job. Guys. You guys were on top of that one. Negative fourth. Perfect. If you've reciprocated it, it's going to have a negative power. So y to the negative. All right, then we're going to do the antiderivative. Now be careful because this one's negative. Remember, what you want to do is add one to the power. We're going to add one to this. It's exactly like we've been doing forever. It's just when a negative shows up, it throws everybody off. So it will become less negative. So y to the negative third. And then you just need to put that reciprocal out front. So negative one third goes out front equals, all right, over here, 4x, that antiderivative will be 2x squared plus c. Now, I'm going to take a step and clean this up so that I don't have the negative power in here. And the negative powers get reciprocated. That's going to come down to the denominator. So this is going to be negative 1 over 3y cubed. I didn't do anything in that step. I just rewrote it so that this was in the denominator. You're going to have to be able to negotiate these negative exponents. These are you know, all your algebraic exponent rules um, that are going to be coming up here. This is very heavy on the algebra. The only step that you do that's calculus is the antiderivative. The rest of this is algebra. All right, now we have an initial condition. So let's go ahead and plug it in. x is going to be 0. So if this x is 0, that all wipes out. This side is just c. And then y is negative 1. So if we plug in negative 1 for y, negative 1 cubed would be negative 1 times 3 would be negative 3. So we would have negative 1 over negative 3. Negatives cancel. And c is a third. Now you're going to go back to this step. Now, usually it's the step right after you do the antiderivative, but I kind of like I fixed this one a little bit. I'm going to go right back to this step, recopy it exactly like it looks. Except instead of plus c, we're going to put plus a third. So you're just taking that c value, plugging it back in. Because again, we're getting one specific answer. All right, and then we're going to solve for y. Now, whenever you have y in a denominator like this, here's what's going to happen. You're going to multiply this y cubed over to this side. And then you're going to divide all of this stuff over to the other side. So they're essentially just going to switch places. Again, you're going to multiply the y cubed over here, and then you're going to divide all of this over here. They're just going to switch places. So this will be negative 1 over 3 times all of this equals y cubed. Again, this and this just switch places. You multiply this over, you divide this over. And then your last step to get rid of the cube is to cube root. So you would have a cube root of all of that. Oftentimes, these answers are very, very, very messy. If you get something that looks like a total disaster, you probably did it right. Um, they, they end up being a gigantic mess. So again, if, if it looks awful, you, you were probably just fine. All right, number five, dy dx equals all this. Notice there are no y's in this problem. Hmm, interesting. So all we're going to do to separate it is multiply over the dx. So we're going to get dy equals uh, all of this stuff dx. Now, when the dy gets left by itself like that, sometimes that confuses people. If you want to put a 1 in front of that, um, then you can do that. That helps sometimes because whenever it's empty, people are like, oh, there's nothing there. There's technically a 1. Then we're going to do the antiderivative. Now, antiderivative of 1 dy is just going to be y. 
that is fantastic when that happens because remember your goal is for it to be y equals at the end and hey look it already is it's cool All right now this is going to be a little bit more work we're going to need a u substitution for this do you guys remember u substitution back in unit seven it's coming back all right um, we're going to let u equal this denominator, the x cubed plus 4. When in doubt, make it the denominator or the thing with the highest power. So that derivative is 3x squared dx. And then you start trying to match that with what's in the problem. Now, there's not a 3x squared. There's a 5x squared. I have to change the 3 into a 5. So I'm going to multiply this by 5 thirds. get out my highlighter. It's been a while since I've had the highlights. All right, so in place of the 5x squared dx, we're going to put 5 thirds du. So 5 thirds goes out front of the integral, du goes at the end. What's still there is this x cubed plus 4, which is u. It's in the denominator, so it will be 1 over u. And hey guys, hey guys, what is this antiderivative? When you get one over u, what is that antiderivative going to be? Good, nice job, guys. Ln. So you get ln of u plus c, and then u is this statement. Whenever I say that, it sounds like I don't know how to talk. U is uh, x cubed plus four. So five thirds ln x cubed plus four plus c. There was no initial condition. So you're just gonna leave it with C in there. And again, what that means is you found an infinite number of answers. This is the general solution because there was no initial condition. All right, number six. Again, this one doesn't have a Y in it. So we're just gonna multiply over the DX. to separate the variables. And so again, if you wanna put a one in there with the dy, if that helps you, then, then do that. All right, so antiderivative. Again, on the left side, that's just gonna be y equals, which again, that's awesome when that happens because your goal is to make it y equals. So, um, so it's less work. Y is gonna already be by itself, by itself. Now this side, we're gonna let u equal the guts of the problem, that inside stuff, the 5x. So that derivative is just 5, and we're going to adjust with a 1 fifth. I hope that this u substitution is coming back to you because that happens fairly frequently because we're doing antiderivatives, so it comes up a lot. Now, the only thing you get to highlight there is the dx. 1 fifth goes out front. Du goes at the end. What's still there is cosine of u. So, hey guys, I need a function that if I did the derivative, I would get cosine. Like, cosine is the answer. So, what is that going to be? Yep, good. Nice job, guys. Sine of u. And then plus c. Perfect. All right, and u is 5x, so we're going to put the 5x back in there, and this is our answer. So once again, we got an infinite number of answers. With the plus c in there, c can be anything, um, so it's an infinite number of answers. All right, number seven. This one is written strangely. I bring this up because they do this occasionally. This really frustrates me. They'll write y prime instead of dy dx. That's really frustrating because your first job is to separate the variables. So you need to have it written with a dy and a dx. So this should really be written like this. Again, I'm bringing it up because you do see that sometimes. Um, I don't like it either, but I'm just letting you know sometimes that happens. So the y prime, that's the derivative. That's dy dx. All right, so we're going to divide over this square root. So we'll have dy dx equals x over square root of 3 plus x squared. So I divide it over that square root. And then again, there aren't any y's in this. So we're just going to multiply over the dx. So we're going to have 1 dy equals all of this dx. 
So again, that's going to involve a use substitution. And again, I always get asked, hey, Ms. Cole, how do you know when you need a use substitution? If you can't just write the answer, like if you can't just go, oh, what's a function that would give me this as a derivative, then that's when you need a use substitution. So if it looks more complicated than just being able to write the answer. Right, so u is going to be the inside stuff, the guts of the problems. 3 plus x squared. That derivative is 2x dx. And I'm going to adjust it with a 1 half. So we are um, going to substitute for x dx. And in its place, we'll put one half du. Once again, this side is going to be y equals. Which again, that's awesome. Every time you end up with that, it's like hallelujah, because that saves you some work. All right, so one half goes out front. Du goes at the end. Let's see what's still there. We have square root of u, but it's in the denominator. OK, so first of all, it's in the denominator, so it's going to be negative. And a square root means to the one half powers. This is u to the negative one half. I put one like this on your test in unit seven. You can look back at it. I put a negative fraction on there because I know negatives and fractions tend to be things we struggle with. We just need more practice. All right, so this one half is out front, antiderivative. You're going to add one to the power. So negative a half plus one will be positive a half. And then you need a two in front of it. So the one half and the two cancel, which is kind of nice. U is this. And to the one half power means square root. So it is square root of 3 plus x squared plus c. All right, now the initial condition. Hey, look, this one doesn't start at 0. Again, it isn't always 0. It's whatever number they give you. We're going to plug in 1 for x and 14 for y. So let's see if x is 1. Um, 1 squared is 1 plus 3 is 4. Square root of that is 2. And then again, y is 14. So we plugged in 1 for x, 14 for y. Subtract that over. C is 12. And I'm going to come back to this step right here and rewrite it exactly as I see it, except instead of the plus C, I'm going to put plus 12. Again, I know I said go to right after the integration, but since this involves a U substitution, we had a couple steps where we had to kind of like clean that up and substitute back in. So go back to the step um, where it's sort of simplified down. So I guess right before you plugged in for C. And again, you can do this as a side problem if you want, if you want to like work that out in the margin. Anyway. Our answer is going to be y equals square root 3 plus x squared plus 12. Oops. All right, so number eight, dy dx equals x squared y. So I'm going to divide the y over to the other side. Since we're dividing it over, it'll be 1 over y dy. The x squared stays there, and I'm going to multiply over the dx. So again, I divide it over the y, and then I multiply it over the dx. So antiderivative, OK. This one is 1 over y. Let me do a quick compare and contrast. This one we did over here was 1 over y to the fourth. All right, if you have 1 over y, just 1 over y by itself, that's going to be ln. This is going to end up being ln of y. But if you have 1 over y to the anything else, like that other one was to the fourth, if you have 1 over y squared or 1 over y to the third, that does not follow this pattern. And you have to write it with the negative exponent and deal with all those negatives. The only one that follows this ln pattern is 1 over y. That's it. If it's 1 over y to the anything else, then that's not going to, it's not going to follow this pattern. All right, equals, and then this would be one third x cubed plus c. All right, there's no initial condition, so I don't need to plug in for c. All we need to do is get y by itself. So, hey guys, how do I cancel out an ln? What do I do to cancel out an ln?
E, good, perfect. We're gonna exponentiate both sides. Now, when I do this first problem, these next few are gonna turn out the same way. Cause I'll, you know, we learn by repetition. Um, eight, nine and 10 are gonna turn out sort of the same. I'm not gonna write out every last thinking step for all of them. I'm gonna do it for this first one, but you're gonna end up skipping some of this in future problems, right? We get absolute value of Y equals E to the power of all of this stuff. Now, when you multiply, that's when you add your exponents. Again, we have to remember all our exponent rules. So this is gonna be E to the one third X cubed times E to the C. Again, multiplying is when you add your exponents. So it was E to the power of those things added together. It's E to the first stuff times E to the second. All right, now E is a number, 2.718, da, 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 da. C is a constant, so that's also just a number. So E to the power C, this is just a value. And the way that you see that written is they'll put that out front. So E is just a number, C is just a number. The whole thing is just one big number. It's just one constant. So being multiplied on. So they'll put it out front, C times E to all this stuff. And then the last step is to get rid of the absolute value that's gonna involve a plus and a minus. Again, absolute value is a distance from zero and you can go in the positive or the negative direction. We need the plus minus because there's no initial condition. So you want an infinite number of answers and it could be positive or negative. Again, I'm gonna build on that idea with what we do in the next lesson. So that's why I'm kind of hammering that really hard. So let's try another one that's like that. Here we're gonna divide over the Y. So again, it'll be one over Y dy. And then we're gonna multiply over the DX. So four X cubed DX. Right, Anti-derivative. So again, if it's one over y, that's gonna be ln. And then on this side, we'll get x to the fourth plus c. And then you're going to exponentiate both sides. So it's gonna be y equals, again, you're probably not gonna to wanna to write every single one of these steps all the time. It's gonna be plus and minus c, you'll have that big constant out front, e to the x to the fourth. And again, it's because you would have e to the power c, that's just a number, you put it out front, times e to the x to the fourth. And then the plus minus is for the absolute value. So I'm gonna do another one that turns out like these, but this one has an initial condition. So it's gonna be the same kind of thing, except we won't have a plus minus. This initial condition is positive. So we just want the positive version. Again, it's based on your y value, whether you want the plus or the minus. So here we're gonna divide over the y and then multiply over the dx. So that is gonna give us ln of y equals, uh, gosh, what would that be? Two thirds x cubed plus c. Now, because this one has an initial condition, we're going to have to plug in. We're going to plug in zero for x. So if x is zero, this is all gone. We just have c on this side. Plug in three for y. So this will be ln of three. I dropped the absolute value because absolute value of three is three. So we're going to go back to this step. And we're going to recopy it exactly like it looks except instead of plus C, you're gonna put plus LN of three. And then to get rid of the LN, we're gonna exponentiate both sides. And again, when you're adding, you multiply. You multiply when you add your exponents. The E and the LN are gonna cancel. So out front, you're just gonna have a three, that's your constant. It's three E to the power of all of that. So three e to the power two thirds x cubed. Again, I didn't put the plus minus, I did drop the absolute value, but I didn't put it, our initial condition is positive. So we want the positive version of that. But again, if it's multiple choice on the AP exam, a negative version would probably be one of the choices because they like to do that. So you gotta be really careful. But if you're paying attention, you can eliminate your choices. So, you know, it works sort of both ways. 